And we're back. This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Late Spring from 1949, directed by Yashijiro Ozu. The synopsis for this film, RJ. No tagline, but we got a synopsis. Noriko is perfectly happy living at home with her widowed father, Shushiki, and has no plans to marry. That is, until her aunt Masa convinces Sushiki that unless he marries off his 27-year-old daughter soon, she will likely remain alone for the rest of her life. When Noriko mm. resists Masa's matchmaking, Sushiki is forced to deceive his daughter and sacrifice his own happiness to do what he believes is right. <gasps> is that accurate? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you really sure? I am sure. Mm. Mm. I, I maybe may, did I watch late maybe summer? I watched late summer instead, or late autumn, or Virgin Spring. Yeah, you might have watched the wrong movie. Well, yeah. let's find out. Let's oh, find well. out. Uh, so this was a rewatch for me. Mm-hmm. I watched this like six years ago, I think, when I was getting into that Ozu. And uh, I really liked it, I guess, when I uh, first watched it. I, I, I dropped a big four and a half stars on this movie. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it might have been maybe the first Ozu movie I ever had seen. And I think, um, f for me, I was really struck. And I, I feel this kind of the same way about this. The cinematography, the uh, pure visual storytelling, the simplicity of the story, uh all those things were like uh, really pleasant to, to mm. watch. To watch as a movie, I guess. Be like, man, it's movie so 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 nice. It's just such a nice little movie. Uh, pleasant, he ple says. Pleasant, I says. And uh, well, we'll we'll go through it though, because sometimes this movie, there's like when the when the drama ramps up, when uh, Ozu gets like violent, where it's like it, it's very funny uh, watching. <laughs> Watch. When Ozu gets violent? Yeah, when, when there's, like, violence in Ozu movies or when people are upset. And you're like, whoa, whoa, what's going on here? People mm. are raising their voices. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. We'll, we'll get there, though. So, yeah, so this was a rewatch. It's, it had been a number of years. And I was kind of curious um, how my own temperament or taste in movies might have changed in the last six years, uh, particularly post doing this podcast. What do you mean? Well... As we've discussed before, um, being strapped in and having to watch these movies as we have decided to, in order, regardless of if you're in the mood to watch it, mm -hmm. you got to do it. It doesn't matter. Oh. And, and so these are things that uh, I think our listenership, our random listenership um, mm -hmm. on such platforms as YouTube uh, don't, don't quite grasp is that yeah. when you're watching these movies – uh, and in this arbitrary order that has no real rhyme or reason to it, that might hit, it might cause the movie to hit you in the wrong way. Especially if you go into it being like, I do not want to watch this. Uh, mm -hmm. It can impact you. It can, it can be like, oh. This, I understand. This isn't as enjoyable. Some movies are just, if unless you've already, especially if you've never seen it, that's an important uh, point to make as well. But, you know, anyways, that's neither here nor there. So, late spring. I know, RJ, you had never seen this, and your OZUs mm -hmm. have been limited to the ones that we've talked about on this show so far. Yeah, I'm limited to that, but, I mean, we've seen some pretty good OZUs we've seen, so we've far. We've seen that Tokyo story. We've seen that mm -hmm. uh, Good Morning. Mm -hmm. What's the other one we've seen? The fart one. Late that's, Summer. That's Good Morning. Late Summer. Late Summer. Did we... Wait. What's the other Ozu movie that's got... It sounds like... It could early be early summer. It could be early summer. This is this is where it gets tricky. See, we've seen that one too. Yeah, we've seen early summer, and early summer has a very similar story and floating weeds with similar actress because it's the exact same actress as late spring, and, early summer, and, and Tokyo Story. Yeah, yeah. So, like, when I'm not gonna lie to you, when I threw this on, I went, "Is this the right movie? I've seen this before." And then I went, "Oh." I was thinking of early summer, which we watched uh, last August. 20. Yeah. So uh, I went, I've seen this Ozu movie before. And then I was watching this. And I went, oh, maybe I haven't. I said, wait a minute. Maybe Ozu. 
makes similar movies. So we just watched Late Spring, but there's also Late Autumn and Early Spring. Well, are you saying, RJ, that Early Summer, which was made two years after Late Spring, that has the description Noriko, Mm -hmm. (laughs) still single at the advanced age of 28, lives contentedly in an extended family household. See, it's completely different. There's a whole bunch of people uh, that live in that house. That includes her parents. Different. Her father is in a widower. And mm-hmm. her brother's family. See, a completely different movie. And Uncle's oh, visit sure. prompts the family to find her a husband. Uh, as an uncle as opposed to um, an aunt? An aunt would change the game yes. completely, eh? Hey? Uh, completely, yeah. I mean, yeah. Get, get, pull your head out of your ass, okay? Well, let me tell you something. Ozu. O- Ozu? Ozu sounds like a drink. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I think Not uh, Uzo, uh, but a, like... A co-worker of mine, I think, literally said something similar where I went... He was talking about a drink called Ozu, and I went, You mean like Yashujiro Ozu, the filmmaker? He's like, mm-hmm. oh, I was thinking more of a beverage. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I hear Ozu, it's like it sounds like a drink. Like something that you drink in the summer... Is it a good drink, though? Yeah, I think so. Is it? It's, some, it's something desirable. Well, there is a drink called... Like, it's like Uzo. Uzo is a liquor. That's Greek, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. O-U-Z-O. Yeah, I know about Uzo. Wow. This one's different than Uzo. Or is it? I don't... Yeah, I don't think so. Or is it? Or is it? Anyways, let's talk about... Late spring. Yeah, tell me about Uzo. So, Ozu. movie opens up with Noriko. Uh, sure. Who will call maybe his daughter. Sure. Uh, she's chilling with her aunt at a, at a ladies club. And it's like a tea club for, all the, for mm-hmm. all the ladies. So we get a little bit of the you know chit chat. And we get mm-hmm. the niceties of making tea. And the ritual of it all. Uh, RJ, question for you right off the bat. You ready for this? Okay. What's your favorite static shot of stuff in this film? Bikes on the beach. That is a really great shot, isn't it? The two bikes, just no, no, bikes ri- on no riders beach. on it. There you go. See? Mm-hmm. What about your static shot? Oh, I'll get there. I've got notes. I got what about few. your hip hypnostatic well, killer from Millennium Season 3? What about that? Oh, well, you, have to, you, have to, you, have, you have to tune into our Patreon to get those uh, the exclusive content for those interested in Millennium. Oh, it's Season quite three. exclusive. Very exclusive. Very exclusive. Uh, oh, by the way, hey RJ, uh, this yeah. is a, this is kind of a follow up from a few weeks ago. Uh, yeah. This is this is some preamble talk. What did uh, what did you eat with chopsticks this week? Potato chips. That's it. You haven't eat, you haven't stepped up that chopstick game. Uh, so here's what I've eaten with chopsticks in the last couple of weeks. Yep. Potato chips, any flavor. So I, I'm a salt and vinegar guy. Andrea told me. Like a year or two ago, she's like, "You gotta give it, you gotta give it a break on the salt and vinnies, bud." She's like, "You gotta cool it on the vinnies," and I was like, "No, I'm not going to." So uh, salt and vinegar chips, and then uh, I had that popcorn, that Chicago style pop, where it was cheese and caramel. Um, what did I have the other day? Oh, cheese nips. I had cheese nips with chopsticks the other day. Mm. Have, have you ever tried that? I've not. I've never tried okay. that ever. No one brought it up this week, eh? In the emails, no. One, I, apparently people are just on board with me doing that is that what so. it is yeah that's a lifestyle choice rj and i'm happy and, with it and they're okay with that as they should yeah, be it's the right choice it's the right choice so that yes. being said uh we get back to papa <laughs> Shushi. Yeah. Sh- yeah. uh he's working on his manuscript with his assistant in a world without word processors uh, is that how it's described, or is well, that how that's you're how, describing that's how I would it? describe it? Because it's two okay. men who are like having to write everything up by hand, and then he's he after he finishes a page, he hands it off to his assistant who makes all the corrections. It's no different from what we do, I suppose. I, I take your 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 shit and I turn it to pure gold. I mean, I think, if, I think if what people, you mean if people could only imagine what raw form RJ's words take before I'm able to. Uh, whip them into a, a beautiful uh, potpourri that we all know 
in the final product. And we and people in, are sitting in awe of being like, man, Arjun really gets it, you know? I think people can see through that for a few reasons, but I think the number one reason is that people understand that there's no, there's no like caging this beast and there's no grooming in the sense like <laughs> the KG you, beast. Yeah. The KG beast. There's no grooming where it's like people, grooming. Know I, people know I don't do any more work than what is right in front of me. I don't do any prep. I am not going to re-record stuff. I show up for the time slot that is allotted. <laughs> nothing more. Yeah. And that is it. Raw dog. Nothing before, nothing after. And the grooming that you have been doing <laughs> in the past years. Yes, Jared is older than I am. And yes, he approached me to do the podcast. At, so At a lake. At a lake. Yeah, he took me for a nice walk around the lake. I bought you lunch. And, and I think it was late spring at the time. <laughs> and uh, he said, so have you ever heard of Yashijiro of Ozu? You ever heard of Ozu? And I said, I don't know. I'm just the kid. I don't have a lot of opinions on a lot of things. And uh, now now we're involved in a large-scale civil suit. So a lot of people are coming for you. A lot of people. So uh, yeah. one one particularly tense moment that comes mm-hmm. up between uh, Papa and his assistant is uh, the assistant mentions, hey, you know, I, I did the math in that Mahjong game we were playing last night, and uh, I think I actually won. And uh, Papa goes, ah, and then goes back to writing. <laughs> I I was going to – I really like the review that I did for this because I think it's fitting. But my other – if I were to do a different review, it would have been, ah, because that's, that's the dad's <laughs> most popular line in this movie. It's just, that's kind ah. of That's kind of that actor's motif. That's his range? In, in all ah. of Ozu is the uh, – mm. It's like, did you know this happened? And he goes, uh. yeah. <laughs> and then no, no follow up, no other noises. Uh. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Single noise. True yeah. cinema. True cinema. Um, true. So uh, daughter gets home. Dad starts bellowing for his tea. And and this is the yep. this is the snapshot of uh, the serene home life of father and daughter. Yes, which is a comfortable life. So here's a shot that's uh, that's like amazing. Uh, after this is, it's just uh, at the train platform, mm-hmm. and it's just people standing there. Yes, and it's like, God damn it! Look how good that looks. Yep. Look at that. Damn. There's a lot of good shots in this thing. And here. then and then there's some trains act action, which I'm like, whoa! Is this some La Bette Humane? Oh, is this some? Yeah, trains. 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 Uh, and then, so, uh, daughter is going to go pick up some gloves for Papa, and mm-hmm. uh, she she runs into prof- Professor Filthy Flat Cap. And they have what's his? They have adventure. Oh. They have prof- They have adventures, not unlike Professor Layton. So, oh. Is that what they get into? Yes, it's a mystery. Interesting. Game. That's something that I haven't heard mentioned in a long, long time, Jared. Yeah. That's a pretty, pretty deep pull from you. Mm-hmm. Pretty deep pull. So when I was watching the commentary, uh, the guy <laughs> oh, mentioned dear. that uh, for the first three scenes with that guy, you don't see his face in anything, and it's a way that Ozu distances the audience from the actors you don't see him and then we get a transition scene and this is the way this guy talks he says you see the signs for the gallery you see the signs for the exhibit but then it cuts to the bar and they're there normally in a normal movie you would have a scene or two inside of the gallery but ozu does not do this he cuts past into the next scene this is classic ozu (laughs) <laughs> yeah Damn. and that's what that's what he mentions uh he also was this guy, what's wa- this guy's name phil mccracken <laughs> i don't remember but uh i i only watched an hour of the commentary and i turned it off but the, <laughs> really? one, the one scene before the gallery scene is the train scene and he's describing like uh he's like it's an idyllic situation between father and daughter they get a lot of things from each other in this relationship and then there's a long pause Nothing sexual 
is intended by the relationship. It doesn't need to be. And then there's another pause. And then you go, what the fuck is this guy? It's like, nobody thought it was sexual. Nobody thought that. But he just pause. Nothing sexual. (laughs) And then he continues. And you go, what are you talking about, dude? Well, Professor Filthy Flat Cap. He's, yes, they're, 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 they have some they have some lunch and they go shopping. They go check out the gallery, and then um, they make their way back to uh, the house with with mm-hmm. with Daddy O. He's got his gloves. There's a nice little chat about their daughter, saying, "Oh, she's looking a lot better after that forced labor." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, lug, lugging those uh, those potatoes around. Is that? What are we supposed to take from that? I don't know. And then they're like, huh, terrible times. How she must have suffered. <laughs> hmm. And you go, huh. Because this is post-war. The war had just wrapped up four years ago in the making of this film. So oh, yeah. I'm yeah. kind of like, oh, I guess that's how they're going to address that. Hmm. And everyone's, it's all smiles and sunshine. Because that's one of those things is uh, uh, Noriko and the uh, actress who plays her. She is kind of probably pretty famous for the, her smile. The this the the I don't know. Was it? I remember uh, in like the Crumb documentary, he mentions the uh, it's this Japanese businessmen have this like smiling disease. Mm. <laughs> it's like it's, I, I think I know what you mean. Yeah, I like, think I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got a good smile, right? But then when it when it turns off, it's like the light goes off in the world. Uh, and it's like the light goes off in your world when you're watching this. Setsuka Hara is uh, the name. She is in a number of Ozu films, like Late yes. Autumn, RJ. Late Autumn to- or Tokyo Twilight? Do you mean Early Summer? I mean all of them. All of them. Oh yes, it's all there. Uh, and yeah, you gotta marry off this 27 year old lassie. Uh, that's that's yes, the that, that that's this is the inciting incident I guess that's like oh this is we gotta get her married, uh, we get some geographical layout humor, where it's like mm. is that where is that way to the tradition? No, no, it's this way. What about over here? No, it's this way. What about this? No, it's not that way. Huh? No wonder this medieval general wasn't able to get around here. <laughs> and I go, I don't, sure, sure. I don't. I don't know. How would you do it? I don't fucking know. I don't care. Well, <laughs> I don't maybe care. you should. You know what I care about? Yeah. Bike rides. Going for a bike okay. ride. Ah, because you just you you just love life. You get to go on a bike ride with your dad's assistant. You just just mm. love live life. How, what's the when's the last time you rode a bike? Just out of curiosity. Oh fuck! For it's been a long goddamn time. I mean, it's been years for me to be honest. It has been a goddamn long time. Andrea wants to get bikes so we can bike around, and I go for what? <laughs> go and to go where? To go where? It's just eat a bag of popcorn <laughs> with your <laughs> with your fucking chopsticks. Yes, I did. And she's like, "Well, just to bike around for exercise." And I was like, eh. I "Said if I want to have exercise, I'll have a cigarette." You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. that's uh, work the lungs. <laughs> it's an appetite suppressant. <laughs> Won't eat as much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Keep down was... that oral fixation, baby. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, ho- housekeepers have been doing that for years, and look at their figure. It's great. What are we talking about? You know um, what I mean? So we got some bike riding. Yeah. We get aunt, uh, the aunt and papa grousing about getting married. Mm. And then they're like, hey, how about my assistant? They're on a bike ride. They should marry. Oh, he's already engaged because in your business relationships, you don't necessarily talk about it. But you're just like, hey, there's a guy. He should marry my daughter. That's how that's how business gets done in 1949 Japan. Do you think so? Apparently, I mean, that's what Ozu's telling me. Yeah, it's fine. And then, uh, then we get a, a regular day in the life of the father and daughter. Just kind of like how they exist. How she's like kind of mm-hmm. subservient to the, her father and kind of does all this running around, basically like like a wife, essentially. Nothing sexual. Thank keep you. Keep that in mind. Thank okay? you, Phil. <laughs> Just keep it in mind. All right. Uh, then, then there is though a little bit of uh, a tease of the sensual tension 
Nothing sexual, RJ, but sensual. Nothing sexual. Between the daughter and the assistant. Seems like this assistant, he's uh, he's nosing around a little bit. He's putting out a little bit of feelers. There is an attraction present. And he's, he's like, hey, hey, because they were to a dinner. And he's like, hey, I got these tickets to the opera. This is a guy who's uh, got a fiance. And mm-hmm. he's like, she's like, well, so I guess so. He's like, I got the tickets for you, or whatever it was. And then, but she bails. So he's sitting there by himself, looking like a sad bastard. She gives the tickets away to someone waiting around for free tickets. And she just walks along. Mm-hmm. And, and then what happens? And then Papa's having a chat with a sexy young typist. Oh, shit. Says, she's got all the moves. What kind of moves? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, moves that Grandpa's into. Mm. <laughs> and this is when she's at the play? Or is that uh, after? Happened? This is after. Because she never went okay. to the play. The last thing I'll mention is the play. This is where I stopped oh, watching. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not at the play uh, yet. We're not, oh, we're not at, we're at, not at the no, the oh, no okay. play. That hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Uh, we get another sit down tea chat between uh, daughter and this woman. This is the, uh, the widow, if I recall correctly, um, that hmm. like seems to be like chatting up her dad and she's kind of like, oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. And then the aunt, yeah. ha- and then the aunt has a chat with the daughter, and yes. this is where we start seeing the stoking of the jealousy and the fear of like of, yes. of, of upsetting things, of, uh, changing things, and uh, people don't like change. Jared. People don't like change, mm-hmm. but um, and so yeah, the the smiles and sunshine deflate pretty damn quick at this because there's like there's these th- vague threats, and this is like it doesn't seem like she's upset at this idea like that movies would have now where it's like. This woman's gonna become my stepmom. It's just not about that. Mm-hmm. She's kind of like, what? Why? Why would? Why would he do? He doesn't need to do that because there's like her needing a life change and her father having a life change and things wouldn't be able to be what it is because she enjoys it the way it is. This pastoral, domestic life of being with her dad and going and doing things. Nothing else. Mm-hmm. Nothing sexual. Nothing sexual. Um. But RJ, I think this yeah. might be the first some some serious toenail clipping. Uh, oh. <laughs> I wish I wrote. This must be a fucking first in the Criterion Collection. There is some pretty pretty serious toe clipping in this. Yeah, this is yeah. yeah. This is the this is the big league. If you want to t- clip some toes, you've come to the right place, Jared. Yeah, maybe get, maybe get some tips. Well, so uh, daughter comes home. Dad's like, you know, he's he's trying to he still thinks everything's Ozu chill, but the Ozu yeah. chill vibe is over. Daughter's pretty mad about something. And he's like, huh, something's off. And he goes, mm. ah, but uh, but he's a little like, huh, she seems upset. Why? Because yeah. she doesn't she doesn't have time for it. Um, mm-hmm. There's a bit where I think it's the the assistant's like wedding photo. Or like engagement mm. photo, and I believe uh, one of the comments we get is "looks just like him." <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> something a, like that. That's a curious lie. It's like yes, mm-hmm. that photograph does look like them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and then RJ, we get the the no show, and oh boy, this is just in any movie that we've watched, it is insta death in my terms of enjoyment of life. Five fucking minutes of this bullshit of the play yes and it's all basically to be like yeah we get it she's feeling threatened <laughs> that because because the, the uh the widower is also there and there's like mm-hmm. one like exchange of a glance that's like not even like particularly charged or anything like that it's like an acknowledgement and she's like oh oh <laughs> so and then we get Oh, yes. <laughs> four or five minutes. So this is where I stopped watching the commentary. That's why I asked before. The only other thing I got from the commentary was uh, he was saying, um, he was talking about the girl, like the main girl's friend who comes over because she was someone who was divorced by choice. Yeah. Yeah. And that is uncommon of the era because women 
weren't allowed to do that. And this and is then one, you okay. Go, okay. No, this is one thing that was throwing me off a little bit. It's because I, I was like, wait a minute, are there, there's two, there's two different characters here because there's yes. the, there's the there's the widower, but then there's the divorcee. Try to keep it together, dude. We do uh, a mo- we do a criterion. I, I know, but when I was like Try to keep going it back through, because it it's like, huh, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, next thing you'll say, you wouldn't even notice if two different actresses were playing the same role. Like, try try to keep it together. Mm-hmm. But uh, so when I stopped watching the uh, commentary, and this guy, as you can tell, he didn't offer me a lot of insight. Um, <laughs> but uh, he was trying. He tried his best. I'll give him that. Um, but it, it was the theater scene. He's like, this theater scene goes on for a while. <laughs> Ozu likes to distance himself, but also he wants to acknowledge the theater. This scene is almost 10 minutes long, is what he said. Almost 10 minutes long. This is quite long for a theater scene. Most movies would not <laughs> show a theater scene for this amount of time. But it's still and, a masterpiece. But it's still quite provoking and then you go okay (laughs) so uh this was one hour into the hour and 48 minutes and that's where i stopped watching the uh the commentary and i went i think i'm done with you bud i think you've you've done enough and he wasn't bad or anything but uh i don't get i i don't watch commentaries ever i only watch this because i was like well it's been two weeks since this movie i should I should do something to try to remind myself get, of get it. Some, get some insights. Yes. Yeah. But anyways. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. But you know who is really into this no show? Papa. Papa. He. Oh, he's got like, he's into this. He's got some pep in his step. Oh, yes. Yeah. Because it's uh, good for him, right? He's, he loves it. Nothing sexual. Nothing sexual. Not but uh, da- da- daughter is, no. No, this is. I don't like any of this. Where this is going, mm-hmm. uh, but soon she's go- going for uh, some cake, some vanilla cake with the this this foxy divorce lady. Yes, with her cardigan slacks, scarfing yes. it down. My kind of lady, RJ. She she really tears in that cake. She's like, oh, you yeah. eat it in yours, and it's like, oh no, yeah, I'm not hungry. It's like, shit, you better eat this. You, you better eat that. She's what's like, I might eat it all. Why'd you fucking eating this? Uh, yeah, I like that lady. She's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I bet. So this is one of the uh, the most violent scenes. I'm sure this is something that our friend Phil, the commentarian, would say. Uh, th- there's like a bit where there's these magazines that are on top of the stack of books at the end of the scene where there's kind of like this um, e- exchange between the two. And the magazines just go sliding off the books. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. Where's the, where's the serenity, Ozu? You're getting, you're getting crazy. Well, things are scattered for uh, for our boy yeah, we're at the get, moment. We, we need shots of shrubs and rock gardens, and now you're like, whoa, the magazines are sliding Kin- off. Kinetic motion, yeah. Jarrett. Things are Frantic. being thrown into a uh, chaotic frenzy. Yes. Yeah, it's wild. I mean, it's so much meaning. Yes. Ten- tensions are just boiling over. And um, now, of course, the, so the father, he's kind of... Uh, He's talking about taking another wife, and it's like, "Hey, daughter, you know, it's time to move on too. I think you got to get married too." But we don't worry. We know a guy. There's a guy your aunt knows. You're gonna meet up with him, and the father's like some low, some acting where he's like having to lie. He's having to lie mm. to his daughter. For well, the, what for, does he for, say? For, for the good of the daughter, um, yeah. that, he's, that he's gonna get married to this widow. And yeah, because like, and, he, and he's twitching out a little bit. Saying, like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna marry. He's like, oh, uh, wink to the audience. I don't know, or is it paining him to say this? So, and aunt, aunt and Papa uh, stop by the Buddhist temple, d- do a little prayer, and finds a, wa- a wallet or a purse, and just absconds with it. And they're like, it's not a weird scene where she finds it. Like, oh, we're gonna return it. Yeah, 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 we're gonna return it. And she goes like, kind of running off, and he kind of falls behind her. And then this cop comes into frame, and the, sh- and the scene just holds as they start walking up these uh, temple steps. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Something like um, that. Uh, then, yeah, the uh, divorcee daughter. They, they're talking about this guy that uh, she's been she's hooking up with now. It looks like sexy Gary Cooper. Very uh, uh, good husband material. Uh, they, really? Yeah. 
Yeah, buddy. Daughter and Papa, they take one last trip together because apparently they're just going to get married. Like they're 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 off to get married to different people, and mm-hmm. uh, their their father daughter dynamic is going to come to an end. They've paid you know another visit to filthy old Professor Lech. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just we, a little one. We got some uh, some crusty old Japanese societal politics. <laughs> mm, yeah, a little uh, bit. Yeah, talking about women and how they need to get married, and this is their thing in life. And you go this and that. Yeah, I see. This is the this, way it was, Jerry. The way it was. The way it was. But hey, of its time. Check out those rock gardens, though. Those and, are pretty sick. And then we get an off-camera wedding. We never. There's a decision, RJ, to, that we never get to see the husband that the daughter's mm. marrying on camera. Well, as I always do, uh, like distancing, distance, distance uh, the audience from the actors for distancing purposes. And then, uh, then we get sad old man who's played his daughter with the threat of his own getting married. So yeah. she gets married, and he winds up alone for the sake of his daughter. Yep. And there's a nice conversation there. I like his speech about marriage where he says where it's like it's nice, but it's also sad because he's like marriage isn't fun. Not at first. And to expect it to be fun for the first year or the fifth year or the 10th year, that's not right. He says you got to work through it. And you go, this is a nice speech where he's giving lots of good motivation, but also, damn, <laughs> He's like, you might not be happy for ten years. And he's telling the divorced woman this. Yeah, and you go, and oh, she's shit. like, and she's kind of like, oh, I'll come visit. You're so yeah. nice. And then we get, mm-hmm. then we get the final little sequence of sad dad, all alone. Yeah, and he's like, oh man, I got nothing. And then the ocean splashes against the beach because mm-hmm. because it just goes on, you know, this thing we call life. mm Hmm crazy life man that's what uh all those tv shows in the 90s were talking about life's crazy oh. careful going out your door yeah so yeah. uh yeah i mean this is uh another another piece of the the ozu experience you're uh you're, you're either in or out I think. either pros pro zoo or no zoo exactly yeah, see, no see, one's thought of that before, see, have they? Yeah, no, I don't think so. Uh huh. Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. I mean, when this comes through later, guy, um, this is uh, this is the wizardry that I have with the editing, where I I, I whip RJ into shape, and these mm-hmm. things emerge. Yes, Brozu, Nozu. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, RJ, I'm wondering, what did you think of late spring post? Two week break and with commentary assistance. What did I think of it? Mm-hmm. You never, you never make me go first. I don't know. <clears throat> um, so I, I like late spring. I like Ozu. I've liked, I've pretty much liked all the stuff we've watched of his so far. Um, I like this story too, but it's like I was saying earlier. When I started watching it, I was like, I was like, I've seen this movie before. Yeah. By Ozu with the same actors <laughs> and like i actually did like i was like i was like i'm pretty sure i'm watching the right one but i checked the calendar that you've made for us for the movies and i was like is late spring what i'm supposed to be watching and i was like oh yeah it is and then i was like what the fuck am i thinking of and then i was like early summer i was like ah. Oh. and then i was like well same story but with the family trying to get the daughter out and i was like oh I, I do think this one is... Um, well, this is the the first installment of Ozu's yes. so-called Noriko trilogy, which is early summer, uh, second, and then Tokyo Story. And it's just yes. uh, Setsukahara playing Noriko, Noriko, Noriko. Yes. So, compared to... I, I'd compare it to early summer more than a lot of other ones, just because I think it's got a few more overlap in... Uh, some of the story points, but um, I do think late spring is the sadder of the two compared to early summer because with the family dynamic, like the mom is dying, but like the family is there and they have each other where in this one, it's the dad is just like, I think she'd be happier if she was married and not hanging out with her old dad. And I am going to 
tell her to go and then you go that's sad you know what i mean uh, um so i was like it's got all the ozu stuff i i like great shots distancing nothing sexual uh nice slow storytelling in a sense not and it's not even like the movie doesn't seem slow or boring at any point but it's just it's it just plays out kind of like how real things play out and i like that mm-hmm. um you get some baseball which uh ozu and J- uh, is big baseball boy that there's kid, not a lot of that that kid that another one of these little bratty little baseball brats. boys who was like yeah. i was painting my bat and my mm-hmm. bat's wet, and I can't do it. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking beat you with this bat. You're like, whoa, little kid. <laughs> I know. You ain't doing anything with that bat. Look at you, you little little cutie. Not quite. Yeah. Not quite. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I liked that. Uh, but, uh, no, I I don't know. Like, it's kind of, um, it's been a bit since early summer. I don't know where I'd place it, like, in relation to it. To me, it's honestly... They're so similar. It's hard for me to kind of separate them in a sense. And if I watched them back, like both in the same week, I'd, I'm sure I'd find more differences. But because we watched that a year and, a, and change ago, I'm like, I don't know. I was like, a lot of this stuff blends to me just because of the time. Um, but I, I mean, I like it. I like Ozu. And I think his movies are good. And I like a lot of the dialogue that they have. And his stuff looks great. And, uh, I don't know. I think the main takeaway is what John Mayer said, Jared. Fathers, be good to your daughters. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. and that's and that's what I think the main takeaway is. You know, you know that song, Jared. Do you know it? You know, uh, I do. You know, daughters. I'm, I'm, aware. I'm aware. Yeah. Do you think I... it's fitting? Maybe. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I, I like it. But uh, my my bottom line is. I like Ozu just flat out, but uh, I this movie blends a lot with Early Summer to me, and I'm I have a hard time distinguishing. And it's like I can't remember Early Summer. I don't remember which one of these. Is, I don't I don't remember which one's better. Do you know what I mean? Right. So that's just me though, because I have a bad memory for stuff. What about you, Jared? What did you, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on Late Spring? Well, thank you, Peter. Um, By Ozu. Well. One one thing of note uh, is regarding. I'm just looking at the production of Late Spring. Sure. And there was censorship problems with this film, mm. uh, because it's about a it's about a woman uh, marrying a man she has only met once through a single arranged meeting, um, and apparently this presented a problem for the censors of the American occupation. Mm. So I mean, this was also viewed as like, way hey you. You old timey Japanese custom fucks, you can't you can't play that way, and uh, you ought, you ought to embrace the individual. Individualism. That's right. Versus collectivism. Well, against yeah, this selflessness toward the societal structure, which I don't even know if it's a form of collectivism as much as like, I don't know if that's what what the word for that is. That doesn't really. It's it's checking some boxes and yeah it avoids I mean with the what America's all about which is making sure you see a nice drink Coca Cola sign on that bike ride. Yes, it is. hey hey you know where else I heard that that commentary track. This is to show the influence of Western cultures on Japan at the time. Mm-hmm. Coca Cola, you ever had one? That's what he says. He says something similar to that, but it is a it is an interesting thing though um, that yeah the the American occupying uh, yes. forces were like focusing on movie things like that and be like no 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 you, you can't you can't do it this way she's got to make the decision you can't have the family deci- you can't have the family deciding that she's going to get married that's just that's not how it's done, mm-hmm. folks. What would you do? <laughs> what, what, what 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 do you mean? What would I do if I was a censor? No, um, I don't know. Would you shove, Would you get shove, married shove, if they made shove, forced you? Sh- no, fuck, no, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> okay, yeah. well, I don't know. I was <laughs> that's curious. that's what I says. He says, "Fuck out of here." Get the fuck out of here. Fo. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Cool, cool. Okay. So, mm. censors aside, Sensor. what's your take on uh, late spring? 
Are you are you pro zoo or pro zoo? Well, I've, pro always, zoo or no I've, zoo? I've always been pro zoo. Yeah, I do. I yeah. mean, I always wonder kind of how uh, people watch these movies now because they're so removed from like modern film mm -hmm. technique, uh, which is like which is why it's so interesting. It's so complete. This is like the stuff that you know Paul Schrader and always talking about transcendental film, uh, like the S and Bresson. Um, and dryer, they're just like such complete packages in terms mm -hmm. of how they're made. They're so well made, uh, but they're also kind of banal. Mm -hmm. And this movie kind of, I think, really encapsulates it uh, pretty well because the way he films everything, the the static shots, the the characters, the fact that he uses the same actors over and over and over and over and over again, um, but in and with these kind of slight variations of themes, but they're all kind of like just reiterating things and different interactions. And but it works. But I mean, if you take this framework to like a guy who directs Hallmark films, and it becomes really evident why Ozu's great and why other guys are just like, this is a paycheck, pal. <laughs> I'll I'll tell you every single fucking story about a girl who goes back home to her family home at Christmas and meets a guy and you're going to fucking love it. Who gives a shit what it looks like? And does she, is does that, she, is that does she, not the does American she, way? Does she have nice, is her hair nice? How, how is her clothes? What do her clothes look like? Do they look fine? Good. Fucking leave me alone. <laughs> the, the American dream. Don't no? be, be contrived, but not too contrived. That's what people want. Hmm. Contrived, but not too contrived. That's right. Which Marvel movie fits into that category? Oh, RJ, let's, let's not let's not do this. Not yet. No, you're not there yet. Okay. No, can't That's do. Fine. It. I don't. I don't even want to. I don't want to contemplate that. That's fine. You, you, you think yeah. about it for a while. <clears throat> How do those uh, straight on shots work for you, RJ? Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, that, now, now, now that we've seen it a few times, I mean it's it's right there for you. Is it homey? Does it make you're, you just make you right in there? You really feel like you're there with the character, instead of distancing, which is also frequently happening. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I like the straight on shots. It's um, I don't know. It's good. It forces you right in. Puts you there, man. Makes you makes you present. You know what I mean? Right, right in the mix. You ever present on stuff? I beg your pardon. I said, are you ever present on stuff? No. Oh, okay. That's fine. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. All right. Well, RJ, you want to hear from people who hate Ozu, who are Nozus? Uh, yeah. I mean, what kind of guy is a Nozu, you know? Ozu's good. He's cool. I, it feels like a lifetime ago since I actually uh, took these, like, a, two weeks ago. That's all right. <laughs> How about <laughs> Tuan? Tuan? I see Tuan. Half a star. A film from 1949 by the Japanese master Yashijiro Ozu. The master of being a boring bastard with awful acting. <laughs> Maybe got about 15 minutes in. Some shit about a woman that, with her constant grinning, has an air of the village idiot about her. Wants to live with her dad for her entire life rather than get it on and live with a real mm -hmm. partner. It's rare that these old films are any cop. What? Yeah, you heard you heard Tuan. Uh, Tuan's favorite films are <laughs> Bloodsport, A Room for Romeo Bros, Boy, the Taiki Watiti film, and Hot Rod. Um, this person five starred Near Dark, which nah, come on. Uh, half stars include Late Spring, The Mummy, the Brendan Fraser movie. Uh, so and this is not Sam Sanchez. No, it is not. That's a Sam pick through and through. And A Trip to the Moon, which I don't know why you'd half star A Trip to the Moon. Because why are you watching A Trip to the Moon? Other than just to, you know, see something that's old, that's cool. You know what I mean? Only God knows the mind of Tuan. <laughs> Tuan's a different duck, is what I would describe him as. You ever heard that one before, Jared? Yeah, I have. Dif different duck. 
How about from Queralio? Queralios? All right. One star. So, she doesn't want to get married. She does anyways, even though she just wants to stay by her father's side. And they have the nerve to call it her father's sacrifice? Whatever. Whatever. Uh, this person five-starred WandaVision, the TV show. And then they five-starred Shang-Chi, the Marvel show. But they also five-starred Joker, the incel pick. And Call Me By Your Name. And A Quiet Place. So they got a lot of five stars. Favorite films include Before Sunrise, Mad Max, Mission Impossible, and Scream. And their quote is, Isn't everything we do in life a way to be loved a little more? And I'd say, probably not. They have a lot of half stars to just horror stuff like random Nightmare on Elm Streets and uh, Texas Chainsaw movies. But they half start Halloween 3. Yeah, that's some dog shit right there. That, that tells you everything. Oh, whatever. Half, half starred Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. Whatever. Get out of her. That's the best one. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best one. How about Joe J? Joe J? I see him. One star. This is the third Ozu film I have seen, and it is almost identical to the other two. Aging parent want their daughter to get married. How many yeah. times does the child have to say they don't want to get married? Mind your business, you old biddy. Let the youth thrive without getting all pissy about them being tied down for the rest of their life. I don't like Ozu. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, old biddy. You old biddy. This person five-starred Brendan Fraser's The Mummy. Oh, damn. So, uh, you know, we got some differences here. Favorite films are Black Dynamite. The Cabin in the Woods, the Lego movie, and Ip Man. Is it Ip Man or is it IP Man? Ip, Ip Man. Ip Man? That, that's the name. Okay. That's the guy's Ip name. Ip Man? Ip I don't know. I've never seen that film. It's good, so it's good stuff. Yeah. You, you like martial arts? Yeah, I do sometimes. Pretty nice. Yeah. This person half starred uh, Swing Time and half starred Cannibal Holocaust. Oh. And they half starred World Trade Center. <laughs> the, the Nick Cage Oliver Stone yes. movie? Okay. And half stars Eddie Murphy's Delirious. That's kind of weird. Why is anyone star why is anyone rating Delirious anyways? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Ah, oh, they got weird taste here. What are there, some other five star films? Uh some horror stuff. Snakes on a plane they five stars, so it's like that's not genuine. You know what I mean? It can't be. You know, I want to hear her. Oh, here's one more. I got, uh, these are kind of fun. How about Steak Chalupa? <laughs> one okay. star that hit their uh, avatar is Bicentennial, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Was just bored. Too simple of a story to grab me, and the acting wasn't strong enough to carry it. Love when Ozu films empty hallways, though. I feel like some people may rate this high because Ozu's a legend and shit. But man, this just didn't have my interest for a second, and nothing in particular stands out. Pretty much, fuck all happens. Only reason I'm not giving this one star mm -hmm. is because half a star. Yeah, what the fuck? Only reason I'm not giving this one star, but they did, is because half stars are for movies that are offensively bad rather than just hyper boring. Steak Chalupa. Steak, uh, Steak Chalupa's got a lot of Marvel stuff in the half stars, which is fine with me. But they also got Hannah and her sisters in the half star, and maybe that's just a Woody Allen thing, but that movie is pretty good. Um, here's their uh, bio. Uh, number one inherent vice fan, NPTA, and Nick Cage fanboy. Music is my main love. So from now on, I try to attach a song to most movies I watch. I love dumb shit, but I love some weird. <laughs> Wait, I love dumb shit, but I love some weird shit. But I also love artsy shit that I don't even understand. I'm also an action movie rom com fiend. Give me all the cheese you got. If I had to pick, oh. my favorite directors are PTA, David Lynch, John Woo, Spike Lee, Hideki Anno. Wow, they love dumb shit. Jarrett. I love it. Uh, Four and a half stars to uh, Gummo, just so you know, from this individual. How many? Four and a half. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. They, like, they love they, dumb shit. They love dumb shit. 
You know? Rom com. Uh rom com, yes. Yes. Dumb shot. How about Luke? One okay. star. Ozu isn't for me. I didn't even finish this. Much like every other one of his films I've seen, San Tokyo Story. He's just way too indulgent in the banal, slower than any other director I can name, and has some of the most sterile shot I've ever seen. Not once mm. in any of his four films I've seen or attempted to watch has a shot across the screen that made me think, oh, I'll remember that. No thanks. No thanks. Luke says, I swear I actually like movies. I can't help. They all suck. <laughs> <laughs> Luke likes I from 2021. Ah, see, I said which is, I, think, I think we've done Luke before, which is one of their favorite films. Apparently, shit for Arch- night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See. Oh my god! You fell for it again, RJ. <laughs> well, who is this person? Get the fuck out of here! Get out of here! Fa- actual favorite films are I don't know a bunch of Criterion bullshit, the Shia LaBeouf thing, the Matrix. Fuck, I don't know. What do we got in half stars here? We got the new Texas Chainsaw. Everyone's shitting on that thing. <laughs> yeah, we can't wait to watch it. And, and, and watch those Blumhouse Halloweens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll get over that. Oh, yeah. this person half starred Kill List and Thin Red Line. That's we'll not see, great. We've talked about this person before. Yeah, yeah. Dust, I started Freddy Got Finger Dust Dust bin with them. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, if you like Ozu, you'll like this too. It's it's Ozu. I, like, what, 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 what more can you say? It's not going to convince you of that. This like this is not the one I would be like, yeah, this one right here, that's, mm-hmm. the, that's the ticket. Yes. Yeah. Ozu. But it might be. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't know. If it's your first one, you'd probably, it'd be new to you. It might be a jam. Yeah. Is that, isn't that what the kids say? Well, potentially. <laughs> Possibly. Potentially. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Um, oh, no. The master? Uh, I am Prozu. Oh, Master Blaster. Uh, I wasn't a big G.I. Joe guy. Wow, what about... Or Master Blaster, the video game you or mean? Or from Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome? Um... He was cool. He was cool. I know you're a toe biter guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or whatever that thing was. Whatever that thing was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. Yeah, uh, I, I do think Tokyo Story is the way to start, and then um, go from there. Hmm. Yes. Yes. I agree. Excellent. Excellent. With, with what you said. Excellent. Beautiful. Yes. Uh, after the break, um, we're all going to put on our flat caps and be weirdos and get some, mm. maybe get some vape pens. Oh, uh, are those back now? They never went away, buddy. Oh shit! Could get some strawberry and bubblegum flavor. Do some tricks, you know. About Bubblegum tricks. vape, you know. Yeah, you you know about tricks. Not really. I know about illusions. No. You well, see what I mean? I I got something to show you. Over at the lake. Oh. 